Hello and welcome to a very special video everybody. This video has got a very basic topic that was suggested to me by a viewer named Torshi. And that topic is this. Games Workshop does not want you as a customer. And I know that sounds very counterintuitive, but I, I'm going to make my point and I'll let people figure out what they feel in their own time. So I've recorded this a couple times and I got kind of heated because of the treatment Games Workshop generally gives towards customers and even people who are interested in kind of a predatory trap store spider manner and it took me a bit to really just settle into this so this is going to be my more controlled attempt at this so please indulge me for a few minutes. Games Workshop has been a fairly hostile company to customers for a very long time. Many of us who've been around the hobby for as long as I have, or even longer, have mostly become a nerd to this. We, we don't even really notice it anymore because the hostility is seen as so normal that we don't really pick up on it until we encounter people who are new to the hobby, looking at the hobby, or don't know anything and ask basic questions. And throughout the years, one of the reasons I've become so pushy in my view that Games Workshop needs to step up their game and be better at giving the customer what they need is via meeting people who've come into the hobby via these different entries. Now, the ones I'm going to focus on are Dawn of War, Space Marine, and then its sequel, Space Marine 2. Now, I've met people who played the Dawn of War series. Um, we'll just say the, the early ones, not that last relic attempt, because that was more of a MOBA, and I don't want to get into that. But I remember people coming into things and going... Uh, sorry about the phone. Coming in and going, wow, this is a really cool setting. I love all the stuff in here. It really grabs you and it's really unique in its own way. But why is it so damn expensive? Why does a box of dudes cost relatively close to, and this is at the time, a full released game? And then you still have to put it together and paint it and do all this other stuff and buy the rules. And it's like, yeah. And I remember, uh, effectively, I would introduce people to the game and get people, uh, you know, the, ba the basics and if they were interested in playing. And I have to remember that I'd be like, look, there's one big thing, and I have to always look at considering that, is how much of your life are you willing to invest in this? And that's via cash, time, and effort. Now, I'm not going to harp on that, but those were important questions because a lot of people will simply look at it and be like, that is a lot of investment for something that I'm interested in, but holy cow, because it's not a light investment. Now, some people, that doesn't matter. They got the disposable income, but there's a lot of other people out there who don't. Games Workshop is something I've learned over the years. It does not want or concern itself with customers nor do they concern themselves with really gaining new people into these hobbies they're more than happy to license out the IP and have a company pay them money to use it and then tell them what they can and cannot do with it but they're not interested in turning those people buying the games into customers if they were they would do a hell of a lot more than they do to effectively oh look well let's really get in there they had the space marine 2 related box out long before the game came out it was in very limited locations like target i saw it in target once and it was only like two boxes and it doesn't really get you into the game it's just a very board gamey kind of thing yeah it's got titus and a bunch of termagants woo but they're not making pushes to get act as like, here's us a bridge into the hobby person who just played Space Marine 2. No, it's more like, oh, uh, well, if you'll give us money, cool, get the hell out. They don't care. They're not interested. Otherwise, 
no one can justify why a company would have a mold paid off and I understand the molding pro the, the milling process and all of that. I've worked in plastics. And I'm going to tell you, no one can explain why the original Land Raider, or the, let's say, the third version of it outside of, well, if you include Epic, is this expensive still. It should have been going down in price, along with a lot of the older kits, but they don't. They go up in price. That's customer hostile. They're not pushing to getting their product on more shelves. They're not pushing to get the price down so that it can sell more and via make more money via bulk. No, they're actually making it harder because they view themselves as a boutique. You have to come to them. You have to do all the work to get to them. They don't do anything for you. And you can't try to say that their shows or any of this is to attract new customers. It's to, to rope in customers they had already because they don't care about them, but they want to rope as much money out of your wallet as possible. Everything is just to bulk money out. Sure, a company has to make money, but they're not really designed to expand the market, to bring new people in. It's really just turning into a circle jerk in a way, or an echo chamber, or whatever you want to call it. And... The realization I had with all of this is, and I'm sorry, Torshi, if you were wanting me to do a deeper dive, I just think that we run into this realization where I'm like, they don't care. They don't want the customer. They're not interested. Pepperidge Farm could be buying miniatures in bulk, and they would not care because they don't have any concern for the customer's potential customers or gains in the market outside of making sure the executive suite is both well lubricated and getting its raises. They don't even pay attention to the customer and their financial reports. They don't even listen to what they want. They don't know what customers want and they don't care. And that's the, the big painful thing with this whole situation is no matter who you are, no matter if you like Primaris, you don't like Primaris. If you like the, the new butchered lore, if you don't like it, they don't care at all. They're not making any of it really for you. They're making it and selling it, but they don't even consider, hey, maybe we shouldn't have our writer turn the the fat last three books of the horse heresy into mostly a thing about his irritating characters no one likes and doesn't need to be three books maybe we can just condense it into one and maybe we don't need to show everything off blah 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 no because it was more like well we can sell three books that'd make more money who cares well the scalpers will bite and then we'll be able to make more money in trades after so who gives a shit about our customers you're not even considered in there. So how could any of these entries be made by companies outside Games Workshop that have to pay them money to make the damn things, to act as effectively free, if not paid marketing, for Warhammer, in which Games Workshop itself then squanders every freaking opportunity to expand their market share, and they effectively got freaking lucky that COVID happened and lockdowns happened so that they could have a captive audience who had nothing to do and they just so happened to have been entering to a degree into the cultural zeitgeist. And now we're starting to see where well, it's kind of starting to slow down. Those people are suddenly not buying as much. It is not a friendly environment towards gaining and keeping customers and the hard irritating part about this whole situation is it does not have to be this way but it would take a company that views its customers as the prime concern and not its investors not what a random employee thought would be cool because he wanted to make his fan fiction a Gilliman into lore they would actually be like well let's find out what the customers want and sell them that instead you get things that are like well these things sold in the past make more of these things and it 
doesn't matter if it breaks the lore, if it doesn't matter if it doesn't bring in new people, because where is the consideration? Where is the care? Where is any of the forethought? There's no products that are there to introduce people in that tie into these big game releases. Space Marine 2? They should have had a couple boxes at massive discounts that they sold aimed at new players and interest groups within the community of Space Marine 2 players and even had Saber advertising. If you're interested in Warhammer, here's a box for super dirt cheap. Yeah, you hook people and you get them in the door and then you get them to pay the higher prices once they're interested, idiots. Not that I think the higher prices should be the thing you maintain, but they're not even taking advantage of their successes. And this is really the the problem. And, you know, I, I hope this at least satisfies to a degree what Torshi wanted to hear. Because really, I can't make any arguments about the stupid marketing, the short-sightedness, the piggishness of the management the fact that they don't seem to understand or care what their customers want to begin with when you have a company that legitimately doesn't even list the customer as a concern in the production and marketing of their things they don't even damn well market they're if you consider their their shows and their literature and all this marketing, where the hell are they marketing it at? Because I don't see it. Have you? Let me know. But uh, that's my bit of a ranty video. I apologize. And I'm sorry for the lack of um, too much editing on this one. I <sighs> Games Workshop gets the editing it deserves. So have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye-bye.